flower bath <laughs> here with you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is very important aspect of uh, meditation and mindfulness that it's not only when you close your eyes and you are a happy and good person, when you open your eyes, you should continue that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because we have time to open eyes much more than we close eyes. <laughs> so uh, this is what I learned from my teacher. And uh, he's a old monk now, 76 years old. But he has a very uh, delightful and youthful way, the way he communicates, like I talk to the children. He said one time, he has one student, like a, a, a guy who runs a big business, and he always complains to others that, oh, I have no time to meditate. And then he kind of settle down, become chairman, and then let everyone manage. And he come to meet my teacher. Oh, now I have a lot of time. So I want to be happy. I want to know Dhamma. I want to know impermanent, everything that I never have a time to do it. So how many times per day I need to sit down and meditate and understand Dhamma? And my teacher said, not too many times, just two times will be enough. Oh, just two times? Yes, the first time when you close your eye, the second time when you open your eye. <laughs> that would be enough. Nothing more. This is how my teacher teaches, and it's deep, <laughs> right? Two times, and this is not like a, a funny talk. is is real. That meditation, wisdom, or mindfulness become powerful when it can transform us in every moment. For sure, it's not overnight, but when you practice more, you can bring you can bring that flower everywhere. Even you can show to your husband, you see my beautiful flower? <laughs> you can show to your wife. You can show to your kids too. This kind of young people. And I'm very hopeful you know, for this 11 years old up that they were going to change. <laughs> we, we see that energy. I often say that if you have kids, you have young people, they will listen what you say, but they will do what you do. You understand the point? And if you teach them something, remember what you say. <laughs> because they, they will remember what you say. And if you didn't do it, and they, they try to imitate you, and they say, oh, why you not do what I say? Yeah, what you do. So I follow. I think that's a big challenge that how we can be mindful in every moment uh, as much as we can. So anytime you learn Dhamma, meditate, just do two times. <laughs> 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 when you draw your eye and when you open your eye. One, you practice uh, Dhamma deep and long enough, you will know that there is no separate section. It's just one section whole day and live in that bliss, live in that kind of victory that wow, I'm, quite, I'm aware what I'm doing, anything come I can respond in the way I feel better every time. Good time, good. Bad time, I still can smile. That's a deep wisdom. Uh, today I have a topic. Uh, that quite relevant to this moment. Uh, it's called the five Mara. You heard this term before? Mara? Yes. M-A-R-A. I asked Alan that he said he touched on this topic from, from time to time. And Mara, sorry. Mara is the term happened from time to time in Pali Canon. And I'm sure that you learn about Buddha teaching and Alan revealed that enlightenment to you, right? That he looked forward to enlightenment. Then Mara come to 
uh, disturb and tempt in many ways. Sometimes talk nice, try, oh, let's go back to your empire, you know. Mara not come as an angry person always. Sometimes come talk nice <laughs> and try to convince you. Yeah, yeah, not, not do something too radical. Live your peaceful life. And try to say a good word. Yeah, live peaceful life, not come out to do anything too much. So they come in many forms. Uh, today I'm going to touch on this topic, uh, which is that if you Google it, uh, it's going to come up five Mara. But it's not a particular set of this teaching in the main Buddhist text. Yeah. A scholar in the old, old day, they pick up the Mara thing from different parts in Pali canon. But it's all referred in Pali, each term. But they collect it. Okay, this is the most <coughs> evil we can find. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's take a look. And Buddha has a lot of teaching. Today I will quote many teachings from Dhammapada. You know this Buddhist text, right? Dhammapada, the path of wisdom. Um, to make it real, connect to the modern day, just last week I was invited to speak in an interesting event, an uh, event called Mindfulness as a tool for climate activism. <laughs> Which in Thailand, we don't, the Hmong, we didn't do the, the protesting thing too much. Uh, two events that we go out and, and, and the apple said, okay, this one we go. So to bring Buddha teaching to the street and then a lot of people come and try to shape the system. Uh, it's not so common in Thailand. However, when they live in New York and they ask about, there's some criticism. Buddhist, you are good, but you don't do anything. In your society, you're quiet in your room, in your temple. <coughs> yeah, good for personal growth. How about societal change? Mm -hmm. And that the people who will not have access to this spiritual teaching because they're too poor, they are too unhappy, like a, no one really f can help the, the helpless. What are you going to do in a society? That's a big question it was addressing. And I look back, Buddha, he very radical. <coughs> he not do anything politics, but he's a prince. You can imagine, he's a prince. <laughs> and then he become a monk. So if you will look at Pali Canon in the wider context, imagine one person like a, in the royal family and become a monk. What the other kingdom will look at him? You are a peaceful person and you will not do anything. No. They're not enlightened. They might look at him as a threat. What you're going to do and your father is still there. Right? And his teaching touch on the society deeply. In India, in those days, they have a caste system. If you've been to India, it's still there. You're from the head of God, you're from the leg, you're from... When the people want caste, use the glass. <coughs> The other cast, they will not use it. They throw that glass away. <laughs> it's from the Buddha time. And when he enlightened, he said, everyone is equal by goodness, not by your surname, not by any position, like a become a monk. If any royal member become a monk, and then uh, one week before that, the farmer become a monk, the farmer who ordained before the prince is the older brother of the prince. Like the prince who become monk need to respect the farmer. Radical, right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Even he not try to touch anything into society, but wow, it's not normal. That goodness, not name, not anything that will who show the value of the person apart from goodness and it's not about men or women it's about what value you practice 
So uh, I was invited there, and then uh, today I will not refer to any name, just uh, learning from this situation and what we should respond if we learn Buddha teaching into the situation and make it better for personal growth and societal change. I saw the cartoon, yeah, a fossil fuel company like a guy, and he smoked cigarette, and uh, looked like a cigar thing. And then the leader of one country, hold the UN building climate change summit. This is your ashtray. <laughs> Very radical cartoon, but I saw in the newspaper, fossil fuel. Yeah, you can discuss. And then one country leader, you know, this is your ashtray. Wow. And it's quite real. How are we going to do with this? Let's take a look on what Buddha said about evil and Mara. <laughs> and finally, it's not a person, it's the software behind the person. Uh, we're going to dig a bit deeper. If you're not clear after the class, you can come and we can talk a little bit more. What is this five Mara? There's a five. Uh, the t one translation is the evil one for Mara, the tempter and the obstructor of goodness. If you want to do good, the Mara will come. Yeah, you're too good. You, let's try something normal, right? So the first one is Gilesa Mara. Gilesa is defilement. You know this term, right? Like greed, anger, you know, delusion. Uh, I mentioned before that it's like a three major color of our mind. Like the red one, white, <coughs> yellow, and blue, right? Like a three main greed, anger, delusion, and it mix up into many, many colors. And the producer <coughs> of this three color named ignorance, <coughs> Avicca, you don't know. Oh, we should have some <coughs> greed so it's productive. <laughs> you know, some people. If you ask people in Wall Street, I don't know what, what, what they're gonna think about this. That this is something sick or not? Sickness, in the way. So Buddha said, this is the first one. Gilesa Mara, make you not happy. Uh, yesterday I have a talk with one American friend that it's not <coughs> easy to to clearly see like uh, when someone maybe works and then oh achieve oh the first one million and they feel so happy. Wow this is good. And then some friend from university come and take a visit. Hello this and that. And that person maybe do 10 million at the same time, the age also, he not intentionally to spark a kind of comparison. But if you not practice Dhamma deep enough, you start to feel less appreciate one million. Because he's the same age as me and we study together. Why he better than me or lucky? So that kind of comparison mind is a little greedy thing already because you not feel content. Buddha said contentment is the highest treasure. When you not feel satisfied, you're still poor. Mm. But when I said it, it doesn't mean that not being productive. No, being productive. But when you have one million, happy with that. <laughs> not worry about the ten million one. It's very tricky. Even you that day you think, oh, one million is not my ultimate happiness anymore. 10 million is my ultimate happiness. It's so real on that day. And then the other day, the friend from the same university had 100 million. <laughs> and then this Gilesamara <coughs> make a trick again. Huh? I didn't intend to be unhappy. Why? I'm not so happy. Can you follow? It's a bit subtle, but I think it's real. Tricky. Samara, and then the whole life, money, 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 money. I teach many um, CEO who stress out, who come and meditate. I told them, 
you work hard is fine, but not work too hard. Because those extra money go to the hospital anyway. <laughs> 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 Sorry to say this, but because when you work too hard, you get sick. And what you need to do, you need to go to the hospital. And then you give the money, you donate the money <laughs> to the hospital. I didn't mean to uh, I mean interfere in any medical field. It's just the reality. Work hard, but work smart. Not work until you <coughs> make yourself unhappy. But money is so delusional that, oh, this, you get this and everything will come. No. Buddha never teach those things. He said when you have wisdom, when you have meditation, you have, have good discipline life, you react that happiness follow. Yeah. I think that's a big lesson that American Buddhism, how we can have this out there. The first one. The second one called Kandamara. Yeah. Mara as the five aggregate. Yeah, you have this topic before? Kanda. Yeah. Five aggregate is form, feeling, perception, mental formation and consciousness. Put it simple, your body and your mind. Oh, today I want to go CMC. Oh, headache. <laughs> then your feeling, oh, maybe next week. You know, this is a, a bit of Kantamara. It's not bad, but it obstructs you <coughs> to do more good. Or uh, you feel like, wow, today I'm going to go and learn Dhamma. And then your children call you from another state with some big concern. And then you're feeling, oh, today I not feel right. Let's watch a movie to be released from <laughs> distress. <laughs> so that is a Kandamara. It's happened from time to time, but if you not watch it carefully, you think that this is, yeah, it's fine. But you were pushed back into the goodness very subtly that maybe you don't see it clearly that little little thing with your body with your mind trigger forward direction or backward direction yeah the second one the third one api sankara mara mara as karma formation yeah any action you have done and make you cannot do your job good. Uh, I put it in a modern term, is your self-image. For example, someone who are um, good, this and that, and they get into trouble, and then they're in a prison for some period. When that person come out and try to find a job, the sentence is all done and maybe something like accidental or you didn't mean to do it but that apisankaramara follow you everywhere <coughs> and you say no it, it's done you know logic is one thing emotion is another thing so with this mara it makes you more difficult to do anything you wish to be good but you need to be patient we all have it. Um, you know, the prison thing maybe look too serious. Let's talk about at home. <laughs> With something you saw, your couple or your children, and now they try to, to be good. And then they so do some little mistake. You see, you are like this. You will not be able to improve. Wow, that's very discouraged. Right? So, we have it, Apisankaramara. Our friend and family might have it too. And the law of karma. If you need a chance from other, you should, you should give a chance to other. When they do something not quite right, let's, let's try it again. Not ponder on that Apisankaramara too much. It's it's not good for them, it's not good for you, 
Yeah, that's number three. Number four. Tewa Putta Mara. Mara as wicked person. <laughs> it's not you. Someone else at home, at office, in the government, anywhere, were tricked by the first Mara, Gilesa Mara. They were tricked, know it or don't know it, but they were controlled by something not bright. Then they cause trouble to us. Uh, easy example, like in the company, I think it happened everywhere. There's only one position for number one. Correct? Another position is number two. <laughs> and when you work with friends, this and that, oh, very harmonious relationship. And then the manager needs to, to pick one to be promoted. And then it pick you, not your friend. If your relationship is so deep, no, no problem. But if not, not that deep, Jealousy, comparison, why? Wow, and then it starts to be not so close. You see the tricky one? Yeah, that, that can cause the trouble also. That uh, we need to be careful because the Gilesa, all this Mara is quite connected. <laughs> one Mara can affect to the other one. So one we look at number four, Tevaputta Mara. Mara as a weak person, a part of these five, you feel more compassionate toward that person. That they were tricked by bigger Mara. We can look at them as smaller Mara because this is not the first person to be wicked in the history, not just one. Right? <laughs> if you look at in the Buddha teaching on the mindfulness as a climate activism event, I discussed that in Buddha teaching, we <coughs> always try to treat the root, not the branch. Mm -hmm. So try to see the big, big picture and deeper one, what behind all this, and not spend too much time on the branch, because when you work, the root's still there. <coughs> And this five Mara is the real root, not one person. Can you follow? Yes. yes. Yeah, I hope it's clear to you. So let's be more neutral, but need action. Neutral to step back, not to be too uh, emotionally misdirected that you treat the branch, not the root. Yeah. Okay, the last one, uh, Machu Mara. Mara as death. <laughs> when death comes, it stops everything. Right? It's clear. It obstructs the of goodness. But in Buddha teaching, everything is related on the karma. Right? So to cultivate uh, goodness more and try to be happy, this and that, even one factor that now is a big issue about mental health, stress, is a big stimulator for many diseases. That's why now people get into this interest on mental training. Because you try to treat that root cause of many diseases also. Like when you get stressed, when you get angry, the temperature, everything in the body just, just boosts up in a negative way. So when you meditate, it's called healing process. Yeah, so I'm, I'm so happy that now is go out there. Yeah, this is the five Mara. Uh, for number five, you might have some questions. How are we going to deal with Mara at death? <laughs> yeah, we cannot overcome. Maybe some, you know, a deep, deep scientist community they try to find something that will, will last long. But even Buddha himself, he passed. And have a quote from Dhammapada that very clear that we can be deathless. Yeah. He said, 
better it is to live one day virtuous and meditative than to live a hundred years immoral and uncontrolled. It's not about how long, it's about how good. But if it's good and long, it's better. Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to clap the hand? <laughs> yeah, you can clap the hand. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm practical. Longevity is one of the blessings of the Buddha. But in this part, he wants to emphasize on quality. Yeah, that is good is better. Yeah, but good and long, that's even the best one. And then the other part in Dhammapada, I think it's something link. Heedfulness, heedfulness like a uh, carefulness, heedfulness is a path to deadless. Heedfulness is the path to death. The heedful die not. The heedless are as if dead already. Can you follow? Yeah. Again, some <laughs> heedfulness means like a, you are careful with your word, with your action, with everything you do, kind of mindful. It's a path to deathless. You are alive. You are a lovely, lively person. But heedlessness, it's like you're not careful. You do things in a way that not respected and it's a path to death. It looks like you, you're dead already. Because you don't have any value to anyone, any person. The heedful die not. The one who are careful, like they never die. Like Martin Luther King. He died a long time ago. But look like he's still speaking. Right? Some die and no one ever remember. It's not about look back to them or but it's the fact that one you deliver, you do good. You die physically, but your consciousness, your spirit lasts forever. So yeah, we can look into death in this way too. Uh, not all teaching, put death and learn about it. <laughs> but in Buddha teaching, he focuses on this. The one who think about death, live long. The one who not think about it at all, sometimes not live so long. Drive fast, and oh, not think about it. Oh, sometimes come. Yeah. I think it's clear to you that death, if you treat it right, is very healthy is really uh, encouraging to live every day the best. Yeah. So I think that uh, the five Mara, okay. I have one more, yeah, from Dhammapada and we're gonna check into now like a step. Now you understand five Mara, how we gonna work with this five mara, some small, some big one. What are you going to do about it? This is what Buddha said. Just as a storm, like a strong wind, a storm, throw down a weak tree, so does mara overpower a person who lives for the pursuit of pleasures, who is uncontrolled in his senses, immoderate in eating, indolent, and dissipated. This is the first part. The second part, just as a storm cannot prevail against a rocky mountain, so Mara can never overpower a person who lives <coughs> meditating on the impurity, who is controlled in his senses, moderate in eating and fill with faith and earnest effort. Can you follow? Yes. 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 Everything we want to do for personal growth or societal change is start in the mind. And in Dhammapada, 
the first one my is a foreigner my is chief everything is my mate any <coughs> innovation any even go to the star it start in the mind so to take care yourself well is a start of a big change personal growth if you keep growing well people will come to you yeah the other day i teach at my place uh, about loving kindness and i have a step how to practice loving kindness <coughs> and that equation as a monk how i practice loving kindness to help other people i said hmm not too difficult when you practice and you happy really personally you attract unhappy people <laughs> in some way happy people for sure because they want to associate with you but the unhappy one who want a solution they will not go to the unhappy one they will look for someone look happier than them right so i share in the class that uh, when i travel 30 countries six continents my schedule is quite packed like a spend time when i arrive to the airport i want to rest work on some issue not done preparing but many time this or orange rope attracts supper people <laughs> <laughs> in the airport on the plane oh, when i'm home wow are you shaolin like that sometimes you are you dalai lama said, no <laughs> <laughs> there are only one dalai lama <laughs> i'm a buddhist monk from thailand <coughs> yeah what you do oh i teach meditation like stress management wow can i have a minute with you <laughs> and it happened now <laughs> that they want solution do you want to change the world make yourself happy that's the best preparation you want to share your company make yourself happy you want to share your family to be better make yourself happy is it clear yes. sometimes we miss this point we grow a lot here but not here and we need more science here the second brain the gut feeling spot we grow so much but we cannot translate what we know to who we become you can read 10 books about loving kindness mm -hmm. but if you not have a step to really practice uh, i share with you like a basic four step number one simplify your life take some time to look back what is needed what is waste of time and not big benefit and you will have much more time to do many things <laughs> and second one practice practice loving kindness meditation and thank to Sharon Salzberg who was here last week she contributes so much to this loving kindness message around the world so practice you can start quiet happy and at the end metta spreading to the one you love and to the whole world and the third step be open there will be people come to you <laughs> because you look happy you look joyful you look wise the third one practice loving kindness action do something give some wisdom give some guidance if you're so good you will achieve you will receive that happiness <coughs> that money cannot buy and you feel so grounded in that uh, practice I would like to highlight this a bit and then we have some minute for Q&A. Today we have some thought provoking so I hope I can address your question. <laughs> Four step, right? In this Dhammapada, meditate on the impurity. I mean every day, this body not forever and I'm not perfect. I try to be better every day. The second one, control the senses. Yeah, I will not spend too much time with things that yeah, it's kind of entertaining but maybe not so helpful for my development yeah, the second thing the third thing, moderate in eating you might have 
Mara. You know, the people who eat well, they're very healthy. I just learned recently that when we eat too heavy stuff, it drains up our energy. And sometimes you eat and you need to sleep for a long time to recover. <laughs> we got the digestive system. Yeah, you can ask many Vedic Ayurveda people, they will tell you a lot about why eating is the basic battle, but you must win. And now we have many uh, contaminated things in the food. I just realized that when we go to any shop, anything look too fresh, be careful. <laughs> there might be something there that beautiful on the outside but not good in the inside. So do not neglect this moderate in eating of the Buddha. Be careful. And the last one, fill with fast and earnest effort. What is that effort? Three basic things. Sila, Samadhi, Panya. That every day make your life good discipline. What is the best daily schedule? I should have. You know, take some time to, to go back to basic. The second one, one life is more simple. Take time to dig deep into wisdom from silent mind, yeah, which is meditation, loving kindness. And the last one, when you open your eye, how you want to use that wisdom to change your life, people you love, and any societal cause that you might attract. You, you see, I will not say, you go to it, it comes to you. And when you work from that center, it's very grounded. It's not too emotional. Uh, <coughs> you see that youth movement, right? That little girl from Sweden. I think it's amazing. And now she was nominated for Nobel Peace Prize. And then some already say, oh, she has autistic, this and that. <coughs> All the five Mara now start to play. I hope she will be strong, be peaceful, and have that deep wisdom to overcome this challenge. Yeah, I think uh, I want to like to end with this one and open for questions. Also from from Dhammapada, overcome the angry by non-anger. Overcome the wicked by goodness. Overcome the miser by generosity and overcome the liar by truth. <coughs>